the journey to success the journey to victory the journey to greatness is a combination there there are three major junctions on your journey to success greatness and excelling in life and destiny generally number one the first key and it represents the first junction you have to cross is wisdom light wisdom number two faith number three power you will never become great in life and destiny if you do not encounter these three junctions and cross them effectively wisdom as a bridge that connects you from one dimension to the other faith as a bridge that connects you from one dimension to the other power as a bridge that connects you from one dimension to the other i have studied success a bit i've had the honor of listening to people who have distinguished their lives and i have found out that if you distill success it boils down to these three keys wisdom faith and power wisdom faith and power if your life is not working i'm saving you the headache of random searching so that you don't troubleshoot indefinitely and not find answers it is always something wrong with the bankruptcy of light or how to apply that light the bankruptcy of obedience not knowing how to engage until it produces or the absence of spiritual backing power in all its ramifications if you find wisdom you are taught how to use your faith to work and you encounter the power of the holy spirit you have mastered the keys to dominion in this cosmos are we learning now this is very very important behind a life of poverty behind a life of pain behind a life of stagnation in life in ministry are a deficiency of these factors anything that is not working in your life i'm telling you wisdom look at the example i gave about this our friend what was the problem the wisdom the light the know-how to know how the keyboard operates how to play skillfully his hands were there the keyboard was on but he lacked wisdom now for this one he does not lack wisdom but if he does not stand up and sit on the keyboard and actually play even though he has the ability to play knowing how to play he will still not produce the result are we together but there are times he can know how to play are we together now and he has the skill he's taking the step but the problem is that there is no light connected to the keyboard he will still not play so if we are diagnosing why this sound is not coming out for us to hear we will have to diagnose the person his understanding or his willingness to take action or there might be an electrical problem with the equipment itself are we together let me tell you the truth this whole business of success is not a mystery from a spiritual standpoint from a ministerial standpoint from a business standpoint it's just that for most of us in being trained to be successful with all due respect uh, most people are only given portions of truth portions of truth either in church or in a business meeting in some seminar and so we have portions of truth or we are given truth and we are not shown how to engage it so that it profits us most of the things that you know should govern success they are not necessarily you already know them you are not in ignorance but for many of us it's a faith problem you have not obtained grace to engage them consistently and then for many other people it's a power problem the divine engracing that supplies the stamina to keep engaging till it works you don't have it the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength your strength capacity to stay and continue till you win is what is small so i'm going to be running with us a few things very briefly the morning sessions are usually a brief session so um 
we'll touch on this and trust that God himself will open us and cause us to prosper in Jesus name everybody shout this after me say it as loud as you can say my results bring glory to God my results always bring glory to God this is the first thing I want you to know that your results go beyond making you great your results go beyond making you successful your results go beyond making you a to be perceived as someone who has made it in life if that is your only scope and motivation for bearing fruit and producing results you will be exhausted it is important to know that your bearing fruit is ministry your producing result is ministry I always knew or desired success in my life by any definition but my my passion for success multiplied when I got to find out that one of the major ways that God is glorified on earth is when the saints bear fruit one of the major ways that God is glorified on earth in Enugu in Nigeria is when we bear much fruit it changed my life a few scriptures that support this John chapter 15 and verse 8 the Bible says herein is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit someone say much fruit it says so shall you be my disciples so the father is glorified if and when we bear much fruit are we together the same John 15 verse 16 says you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit notice in most of the parables that Jesus gave when he came and did not find fruitfulness he was sad whether from the fig tree or from the people he gave talents to he gave one five he gave one two he gave the other one allowed some time returned back and said okay give me an account of what has happened the guy with five said I multiplied it I now have ten well done thou good and faithful servant the one with two i made four well done thou good and faithful servant the guy with one even though he had the same one and he said take your thing at least i didn't lose take your capital back he rebuked him he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant jesus came to the fig tree and the bible says it was not even the time of figs and yet because it was green taken from the earth and would not bear figs the bible says jesus caused the tree and said no man will eat of you again 24 hours later the tree was withered and he did not apologize for it it seems to me that every time god sees fruitlessness it does something to him as revealed in scripture he is not happy whether in a life whether in a church so he's made every investment available for the believer to ensure and insist that we are fruitful and I'm telling you that one of the major sponsors motivations for contending for fruitfulness is that I desire to see God glorified in and through my life and because I want to see him glorified I will contend to bear fruit someone say I will bear fruit say it again say I will bear fruit fruits in ministry fruits of greatness fruits of glory yesterday when we came for the conference I was so touched and humbled I saw several people the overflows I can imagine the workers in the church happy you know that all your efforts and everything has been rewarded with great results I do not know anybody who does not find results consoling results are a great consolation are we together imagine that you came yesterday night and as soon as you got in here it was only the workers that were here after all of the publicity you will still hold service but something within your heart will cry and say there's more than this am i right on that as a pastor when you are experiencing increase numerically in grace in your understanding in impact I am telling you it is therapeutic there is healing that comes when you make progress as a mother if you watch your children make progress that in one year three of your sons done with school got jobs are we together now as a couple you got married nine months later no delay and a child has come preferably twins or triplets am I prophesying to somebody 
Are we together now? Humans rejoice, ladies and gentlemen, when they make strategic progress in their lives. How about business people? That from January up until now, you, all that you've been experiencing is one month getting better than the previous month. It is impossible to live in an atmosphere of ever-increasing fruitfulness and then be sad, be gloomy. Discouragement is usually a product of fruitlessness for a long time. And I'm praying for you. Anything stopping you from being fruitful, going forward in your life, in the name of Jesus, I curse it right now. In the name of Jesus, I curse it right now. Why do you run to church? And insist on testifying praise the Lord I've been a graduate for five years no job and now I suddenly got a job with an international organization and for starters my salary is five thousand dollars per month are we together how is that our business you are celebrating because it gives a picture that you are making progress that the word of God is working for you. If you go and tell your mother, I just got that job, she would dance and celebrate. Let me tell you the truth. Whatever it is that robs you of producing results is an attack from hell. Are we together now? Results don't happen instantly, but eventually they should happen. And when they do start happening, they should be in an ever-increasing dimension. It is a painful thing to once hold on to greatness and then retreat back into your yesterday. Every power making your yesterday to be better than your tomorrow. In the name of Jesus here at this conference, we silence those forces forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the first motivation, the difference between a carnal pursuit and a kingdom pursuit of success is the motivation and the goal. The difference between a carnal pursuit, I just want to make it, I just want to blow, I just want things to happen for me. The difference between such a person and a kingdom person desiring success is the motivation. That your motivation is beyond just having money or just having a crowd, are we together? Or just having things work for you just for the sake of it. Everything in the kingdom must be for God's glory. Your beauty, God's glory. Your education, God's glory. Your resources, God's glory. Greater grace, greater power, God's glory. Listen, if you miss this law, you have corrupted your pursuit. Anything you do about success will only end up killing you. What makes the believer's success useful is this kingdom mentality. That the reason why I'm contending for this, all of us are going for work in the morning, but make no mistakes, you and your colleagues are not the same. Their motivation is to make ends meet. Your motivation is that through your life, are we together? Through the excellency of your results, somebody will see that God is a good God. Through the excellency of your results, you will demonstrate the fatherhood of God. That means your life is like a canvas. And the Lord himself desires to paint a picture upon your life. That when men look at your life, you become a living epistle. They can learn God as they study your results. I can tell you, you've heard me say this, results are evangelists. There is a sermon only results can preach. Only results can preach. And there is an audience designed to listen to that kind of sermon. If your life is void of results, there is a dimension of impact you cannot have, you cannot make. Are we together? Why does God insist that we excel in ministry? Why does God insist that we excel in destiny? Just because we're afraid of failure? Or just because we're afraid of Satan? Or just because we're afraid of a, a low life? No! God's intent and interest is by far more than that. He seeks to be revealed. He seeks to be glorified through the saints. Therefore, the bargain is this. The foundation for a successful life is having this orientation that my success must be a tool that reveals Jesus. 
my success must be a tool that glorifies Jesus. My success must be a tool, not an idol. The only way to not worship things is to convert them into tools that reveal Jesus. If you can make your money worship Jesus, it cannot be an idol to you. If you can make your beauty worship Jesus, it cannot be an idol to you. If you can make the exploits in ministry worship Jesus, the only way to stop anything from being God to you is to force it to join you in worship as you honor the king. My life changed when I had this orientation. Let me tell you the truth. There is no pursuit in my life that does not have purpose tied to it. If I pray right now, I say, God, give me 10 million souls. I have a reason for it. It's not just to show that I'm some great preacher. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is the least of my concern. If I ask God to keep bread and tea upon my table, it is so that I can access the health that strengthens me to be able to serve his program. I tell you why many people fail in life. This orientation they do not have that in my results God is glorified and that if God continually gets glory in my life, he will keep lifting me so that the glory will keep returning to him. It's a simple but powerful principle. Hallelujah. Powerful principle. Many of us seek fame. Many of us seek greatness. Many of us seek glory. Many of us seek an excelling life. But like in continuation of what we said yesterday, until that purging happens, I don't know how I can drum this to you. The reason why many people fail is because they do not understand that their success should be used as tools to glorify the Lord. If you tell me you made one billion, you told me nonsense. Until I hear what the one billion is for. That is where my respect comes for you. Apostle, by the grace of God, I made one billion. Congratulations. Uh -huh, I'm still listening. Out of this one billion, God has been able to help me to sort my life and the kingdom is going to benefit. Now you are speaking God's language and you are speaking the language of anyone who is a lover of God. Are we together now? Apostle, I found the keys to health and I made up my mind that I'm going to start working in health. Congratulations. But why do you want to live long? Why do you want to be healthy? Because I found out that God is looking for vessels in Enugu. And I have made up my mind that I will live long enough for God to allow this body to be a tool. Now there is justification for your being healthy. Are we together now? Now, the reason why many things destroy people in church is that people are given keys without purpose. Keys to wealth, keys to the anointing, but there's no purpose attached to it. And I'm showing you now that part of the wisdom that connects you to a great destiny is not just knowing the laws alone, understanding the motivation behind your hunger for results. If you see me pray and fast, asking God for his power and glory, I tell you, it's not from a competitive standpoint. Lord, give me this. Make this happen in my life. No, there has to be a reason. Why do I want a greater dimension of the anointing upon my life? The reason is because I have seen that the needs of people are increasing that there are greater needs and we're saying father fresh oil so that we are able to minister to the needs of those people thereby reflecting your love why am i trusting god for increase in every aspect of my life if it is just for myself i'm okay but for the kingdom there needs to be a, a transition from being carnally minded when you pursue success from a carnal standpoint, you are only pursuing poison. You are pursuing what will eventually kill you. Are we together? Yes. If this is all that I teach you this morning, it has been great for your profiting. Because for many of us, we learn laws and principles, but the first kind of knowledge, true wisdom, is to understand and realign your motivation correctly. My life changed when I reordered my motivation. If you ever see me pray for anything at all in my life, then I can assure you, if you ask me, I can tell you how God will be glorified through it. 
for your glory I will do anything, anything just to see you to, to behold you, you as my day for your glory I will do Just to see you, to be all you as my king. I want to be where you are. Is someone receiving something this morning? So, you want to live an excelling life, you need to go back to the drawing board and reorder your motivation. Why am I praying? Why am I fasting? Why am I coming to church? Why do I desire increase? Why am I taking more courses, postgraduate courses? What exactly am I looking for? Once your motif is correct to see him glorified through my life, you have found a key. Do you have that down now? The second thing is that you need to press to know God. I'm showing you keys. I told you that is a journey of wisdom, faith, and power. We're dealing with wisdom. These are the bodies of truth that makes a man wise. One is to understand the motive, the question why in life and destiny. And the question why is not, if you have many whys, you are not a believer. A believer has only one why. That God will be glorified through my results, through my activities. Then number two, you must know God. You must know God. John chapter 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Please look at me. You will never truly excel in life. In fact, you cannot truly walk in faith if you do not know God. I hope you know that God is beyond a principle. There is a dimension of exploits in life that is not principle dependent. It is presence dependent. Principles are powerful, but principles are inferior to spirits, inferior to presence. A spirit can stop a principle from working. Are we together? So the principle should work. For instance, there is a principle of reproduction. Are we together? And it should work biologically. But when a spirit is introduced into that equation, it can tamper with that principle. Diligence is a principle. Are we together? When you are tired, the principle is that you rest and your body experiences revitalization. But a spirit can be introduced to your space that can stop principles from working. If you exalt principles beyond presence, you are in trouble. Principles are powerful. But the presence of God vetoes any principle. It is true. I'm a man of principles, but I've known the value of his presence. Most people ignore God and they start learning laws and principles. Principle of this. In getting spiritual knowledge, the first part of call is to know God, then know his ways. Know God, the person, the presence, then the principles. This is a correction for someone now because you are full of a lot of principles but no experience with God is the reason why it's not working. Principles are powerful. And there is a dimension of principles that in fact, principles generally don't need relationship. They just need obedience. That is the reason why you can hate God and engage some principles and they work. But they only work if no spirit tampers with it. Most times, we make it look as if principles work indefinitely. It doesn't matter who is not true. Spirits are enhancers and enforcers of principles. Master, we have toiled all night. It's not a laziness problem. It's not a diligence problem. Something must have happened there. He said, at this point, you don't need a principle again. Let me show you what my presence can do. Cast the net to the right side. Bring me his presence and bring me the laws of life. I will run away from the laws and embrace his presence. Let me see what door will not open when I'm walking with Jesus. 
let me see who will not attend to me when I find his presence. Moses did not say if your principle does not go with us. He said if your presence. If your presence does not go with us. You want to be great, respect principles, but honor God. Honor God. Press to know God. Press to spend time in his presence. You see, principles does not stop challenges from coming. When challenges come, your confidence is not just drawn from principles. It's drawn from the one you know. But I know whom I have believed. Not just what I believe. And I am persuaded. Are we together now? I've met many challenges in my life as a person. And my confidence was not in the principles that I know. My confidence was in that presence. For instance, if somebody tells you, I had a dream. And I saw you dying in that dream. There's no principle that will bring you out of Because at that point, it's not a principle. You need the presence of God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and they are saved. Am I ignoring principles? Not at all. They have their place. But I'm telling you that this principle mentality alone will cause people to do the right things and still fail. And it will frustrate you because you are doing everything that should work. And yes, it is not working. Who is learning this morning? So once your motif is aligned, the next thing is you must take time to know God. And I submit to you that knowing God takes time. Oh. Knowing God takes time. You have to learn his character. To learn his character. So that when you stand before closed doors, rather than chickening out in fear, you know that the God that I serve is a mighty God. There is something about God that when you know, are we together? i give you an instance. When your pastor told you that we were coming for this conference, how many of you doubted whether I will come? How many of you said, I'm not sure apostle will come. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Reverend is just lying to us because there's something you know about him. You know that he has the capacity to make it happen. He has the relationship to make it happen. And he has the integrity to make it happen. Your confidence of leaving your home to come for this conference was based on that. So many times, disobedience to God is hinged from your not knowing him or your not trusting him. You are really not sure God is that dependable. Are we together? If I tell you I have hundred dollars in my pocket, can you see it? How are you sure I'm not lying? Are we together? How are you sure? Maybe I'm lying and I'll just apologize and say I'm lying. Are we together? I don't know how I would have been able to do ministry today if I did not take time to know God. I've not known everything about him. We are still learning. But today God can give us instructions to do some of the things we are doing. Let me tell you the truth. And I'm, this is a leaders conference I will tell you. Talking about the finance that is spent over some of the conferences that we hold is even the least concern. The finance is a serious thing but it's the least concern. You can have money but it takes grace to convert nations together. Are we together? This is not a money thing. It is a true test of grace. Hallelujah. But where does that confidence come from? The confidence comes from knowing God. When I sent you, lackest thou anything? Where do you find the workers? Where do you find the people? Where do you find the place with all of the sentiments? Is someone learning? If you do not know God, you will, you will run out of life. You will chicken out. But when you know God, there are things you will dare. Faith is a natural byproduct of taking time to invest in the knowledge of God. You know his person first, then his principles will profit you. But when you don't take time to know God and you know principles, they will work, but they are at the risk of anything 
interruptions that come from spirits and spirits will come because they know that you are about God's business they will come and tamper with many things so that when one plus one should be two your own equation will be one plus one equals zero you will now do ten plus ten the answer will still be zero hundred plus hundred will still be zero and you say but this is wrong unfortunately in the realm of the spirit it does not work mathematically it works as allowed by spirits the same way God can step in and one plus one should be two but God decides to add zero who will clean it so one plus one and your one plus one equals 20 and you say no no this is not correct but that's because of the presence of God when the principles want to say no God says my presence is an addition it's a factor I hope you're understanding what I'm teaching you. There is a reason why you see that although we engage these principles, you clearly see that the results are beyond principles. Beyond principles. If I tell you that every result today that God is rotting through our lives is purely based on principles, it would be stupid and foolish to say that. Are we together? Presence. There are things you and God can discuss in the secret place. And God can say, I want to honor you in a way. And you too, you will see it. And you cannot remember engaging any principle that should produce that kind of result. It's the reason why there is no pride. You humble yourself again and say, God, you have surprised me. Oh, You have surprised me again. Who is learning? Hallelujah. Principles. I remember when God gave me an instruction last year when we were holding our first conference and God gave me that, that instruction. How do you go and hold a conference on a weekday in Europe? A weekday, not a holiday. A weekday. And then you are gathering people. You are using the largest indoor sports theater in the whole of, uh, you know, UK. Can you imagine that? A weekday. Who do you think you are? Just because you are anointed in your community, you don't want to go and embarrass yourself in front of the whole world. But God said so. And because you know him, you can get up like a fool until you win. Are we together? And then to make matters worse, God gave me an instruction and said there is a narrative that the church has sold to the European space. I want to use it to correct. And because of that, no offering and no money will be raised. Nothing. There should not be mention of any money and you are going to feed the entire workforce of over 2,000 plus people. That was the instruction. If you don't know God, bah, there are some things you should not try because the shame and the embarrassment that comes from your life will be a memorial. They will use it in Bible school to warn younger ministers. I hope you are learning the knowledge of God. And we took that step and I remember when we were wrapping up the conference I just stood and I looked and I said my God truly when men know God they become signs and wonders they really become signs and wonders I remember I returned back and I said Lord because every time I return from an assignment I give God progress report to I go back on my knees and say God your boy is back you gave me an assignment I'm done and I remember the Lord speaking to me and said, because you honored me and you obeyed that instruction, you will never look for resources again for any international conference. It's true. It's true. You know what it means to hold conference in Nigeria, back to back, US, Canada? You see that now? The millions of dollars that you put for those conferences it doesn't matter they don't care what is happening to your naira that you can start negotiation before two months your naira has done what it has done you see that the help of god let me tell you this i know the benefits of knowing god and i'm speaking to someone take the time to know god oh take the time because your destiny will investigate whether you know God sincerely Jesus I know Paul I know the spirit said but who are you there is no standing in this in the spirit 
many people are just principle conscious I'm coming there but I am trying to correct something this morning beyond principles there are principles that help you to sing well my dear people am I right on that I'm sure some of you do all the training your voice training don't eat uh, this huh? when you are singing no palm oil no this and that so it doesn't interrupt your voice you know that you can get all of that in right and stand by the knowledge of principles and raise a song with a beautiful voice and somebody will be sleeping while you are singing you are mentioning Jesus you are mentioning salvation you are mentioning breakthrough and the person does not know why he's dying as he's hearing you because presence was not there every principle was correct the same way a preacher can come and preach principles genuine principles and those who are listening they don't know why there's no life coming from what they are hearing it is not an error what they are hearing but there's no life because it is presence that gives life the rod of Aaron disobeyed a fundamental principle of growth anything that grows as a tree must be planted to the earth but that rod violated that principle but because it was in the place of presence it still produced results so when you come and look at someone who does not seem to have a root and yet you see results it may not be fake find out what else supplemented it are we together it is true that based on principle business people it takes about five years listen oh about five years for any business to break even am i right on that then it will take another three or four years to scale if the factors are in your favor root but there are times a sincere person can say god i did not come from a family with a father i did not come from a family with a mother i am not lazy this is what i bring before you i bring my rod and in one year you will be hearing the story in enugu here it's as if a spell was casted on people and people just come to the supermarket and they are queuing before it is open every time you see results that are beyond principles i tell you a spirit has come to partner with it whether it is an, a, an occultic thing use this and get any result on earth the moment you see one plus one giving more than two i am telling you as a man of god there is a spirit either a demon is making it four or ten or the holy ghost has come to say i will back you i am a man of principles i teach principles but by principles i should not be where i am now by principles by principles i should go forward but not this level not this level of ministry not this level of impact but when the presence comes i love i love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. Hallelujah. Now, sit down. Eloquence. Being able to speak eloquently is a principle in communication and there are people who are vast in eloquence they speak like gods and you will be surprised there's no increase their organizations does not grow are we together and there are others who will speak you are wondering what is this man saying i have studied life the equation is not linear no the equation of destiny is not linear ladies and gentlemen only fools think it is linear i have seen an unfair advantage watch the trajectory of the life of a preacher a life of someone there are times you will see someone's equation is minus one minus one and yet the answer is one thousand how did that happen it's an answer that only god can give how does a young boy without a mother without a father without an assistance he studied something in school that should not even give him a job all of a sudden he wakes up one morning and meets with another person and in four months he's working with united nations no 
Mm -mm. That is one plus one equals one thousand. It shouldn't be that way. My prayer for you is that this dimension of results that will cause you, you will be the first one shocked by your results. May you begin to walk in that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. When you take the time to know God, understand his presence, learn how to invite him into the affairs of your life. The Bible captures everything I've said in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It says to lean not unto your own understanding. Then it says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says be not wise in your own eyes. That is the danger of being enlightened with principles alone. He says fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I submit to you today by the mercies of God. I've stood before kings. I've stood before presidents. I've stood before the high and mighty. God has carried many lifetimes and brought to me today. And sometimes I look back and I cannot see the justification of principles alone. I am a man of principles. But if I tell you it was one plus one that became that, I repeat to you, I should not be at this level by principles. I should not be yesterday, but I should not be today. I should be somewhere between yesterday and today, still walking my way. I share with you a vision that I had. One of the visions that opened me up. I've shared part of it where I saw a generation, an endless sea of people crying, no food, no water. When I was going to rush to go and help those people in the vision. Please listen. I say that for a reason. I was afraid because in that vision, it was as if there were some people who wanted to hurt me and I was afraid because I didn't have the power to fight. But I made up my mind. I said, if I perish, I will perish. I can't let these people cry like this. As soon as I opened the door, I didn't understand what that vision meant until the later years. I opened the door by myself engaging principles but the first person I saw was a giant gray bearded man now I know it's a similitude of the Holy Spirit I mean infinitely bigger than me maybe it would be like 20 feet or 25 feet and here is a tiny boy standing and he stretched his giant hand he said I should place my hand on his hand I placed my hand and he said I will walk with you and he held my hand watch this now and we started moving. You, you can imagine, it's like dragging a dog. But I was following. Then from the vision, the journey was not a road. It was buildings. But you had to jump from one building to the other. And connecting the buildings were small ladders. And he took one giant step and went to the other building. And was watching me as I was coming. I was climbing slowly. Because the building was really large. He was a giant. You see. I know now what that meant. The small ladders were principles. But he did not leave me to principles alone. He was there. And there are times when you are too slow. He says for the purpose of where we are going. God carries men. Oh. God carries men. God carries men. If you don't believe that, you don't know the power of God. God carries men. Are we together now? Like a mother carrying the baby. It's true that the baby should walk. But there are times you are in a hurry. The flight is about to leave. And you pick the baby. When you pick the baby, you don't see the baby's steps. But you see the baby inside the aircraft. How did you get there? You were carried on the wings of his mercy. Let me prophesy over someone in ministry. Someone in business. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will be carried on the wings of the spirit. You will be carried to a realm of extraordinary results. A realm of extraordinary manifestations. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Have you understood everything I've, I've taught so far? That your journey begins when you correct your motif. 
And then second to that is you must press to know God. Now listen, when the knowledge of God is in place, then you can now begin to press to learn principles. Let me list for you at least 10 laws, principles that you need to learn to excel. I don't have the time to teach them. Number one, the law of diligence. You must be a diligent person. Number two, the law of honor. I'm showing you the various laws that now make sense when you find his presence. The law of diligence. There are so many, but I will list a few. The law of diligence. A diligent hand shall be made fat. For not being a diligent person alone, life can work against you. Number two, the law of honor. Hmm. Number three, the law of relationships. You are as powerful as the men who have chosen to stand with you. Did you hear what I said? You are as powerful as the men who have chosen to stand with you. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. These are the names of the men who shall stand with you. Media, give it to us. Read the A part, please. Let's read it together. One to go. These are the names of the men that shall stand with you. Every time God gives you an assignment, there are men who stand with you. And to the degree to which you have found those men. And you must know the principles that bring them. Uh, one principle of relationship is friendship. He that wants friends must first show himself friendly. So if they say turn to your neighbor in church and you turn and look at the person. You will later find out that your application is in his office. The person you just ignored. You never knew that was the CEO who just came to church. Turn to the person and say good evening and you ignore the person. And then by Monday morning, you say, are you not the one who sat close to me on Sunday? Say, I didn't know the law of relationships. Is someone learning? Very, very powerful. These are spiritual laws. So laws that if you engage, are we together? Write the third, the law of excellence. Excellence is a law. He said, Oh Lord our God, how excellent, not just how mighty. What does it mean to be excellent, to be thorough, to surpass ordinary standards? When you make up your mind to be excellent, that in itself, excellence is a language like Igbo, like Yoruba, like Hausa. There are people who hear that language. When you speak their language, if I say stand up in Igbo, and someone is not able, he will be seated because it's not his language and he's not been trained to learn it. Excellence is like that. Excellence has a language that says, come to me and those who are excellent hear that language and they will answer it. If your business is not speaking the language of excellence, there are some people who will not be aware that business is there. The Bible says, Gentiles shall come to your light, but their kings come to the brightness of your rising. The law of excellence are we learning now i mean this I'm, I'm just listing for you a few laws that if you do not understand the law of humility for instance the bible says but he giveth grace to the humble god gives grace to the humble are we together he opposes the proud so every time you find yourself engaging the law of humility, know that there is no limit to your rising. You know why? Because humility is based on an awareness of where God brought you from. Humility is one, um, one mistake you can make that both God and Satan will fight you. And when God is fighting you, the anointing cannot help you because the anointing was not designed to fight God. The only thing that helps you when God is fighting you is the prayer of mercy. Are we together? There are many people, when Satan fights you, is bad. But when God fights you, you can't run to Satan, you can't run to men. It's still him fighting you, you run to. How can you run to a man who is fighting you? God for you. The only person who can help you. Where can you hide from his presence? Will Satan cover you when God is fighting you? Will men protect you when God is fighting you? When God is fighting you, anything fights you, even what he gave you. Anything. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of God. If Satan is fighting you, not everything fights you. There are things God gave you that can even shield you from his attack. But when God is fighting you, everything from him joins in the fight. Everything. This is why nobody wins, oh. 
if you fight with God, you will not win. And one way to cause a fight between you and God, unfortunately, if it ever happens, is pride. Pride. Run away from it. Have I listed a few laws for you now? Now, imagine a human being who is living his life, ladies and gentlemen, not knowing God and not knowing these laws. You wake up in the morning between 6 o'clock and 12, you have violated five laws. The law of diligence, you failed. The law of humility, you failed. The law of um, relationships, you failed. The law of honor, you failed. In six hours, you have violated those laws. You are only laboring, wasting your time. I hope you know that everything that brings us results is not what we do. It's the understanding that supports what we do. Are we together? Do business and violate these five laws. I don't care what else you know. You will lose. You will lose for sure. Hallelujah. There are many other laws. There is the law of continuous development. Continuous development that you never settle. You know that there is still a better tomorrow. The law of continuous development is how champions remain. Champions. Continuous development is not for failures. It's for those who have already started producing results. And something happens to you when you've started producing results. Complacency. And so when you give to continuous development, you have conquered the laxity and the deception that success brings. Hallelujah. Principles. I have a few minutes. Let me jump and talk about faith. Please look up. How many of you know that it does not matter what you know if you do not take steps to engage it God is not committed to making it work for you I gave an example one time let me give it again where's that my friend please come this is my friend you are a good friend come watch this I'm going to give you an instruction the instruction is to go right there and return okay so go right there and return Did he obey me? Now, he may not know why. There was no reward, unfortunately. This is why many people don't obey, because they seem not to be able to see the reward. They want to see the reward first. Are we together? Obedience is not just based on reward consciousness. It's based on trust. If the only thing that governs your obeying God is a sense of reward, then there are many instructions you will not obey because it is not every instruction that comes with rewards there are instructions that are meant to build trust i told this guy now go go again how many of you know that to somebody i'm wasting his time come back did i give you anything did you expend energy you would have been doing something go again come back Go one last time. Listen, I want to teach you a dimension of obedience. By now, this guy is honestly getting tired too. It's just that his respect for me. Are you seeing now? So at this point, he's not going and coming just because of reward. He's going and coming because he trusts that I don't even know what I'm doing. But I trust that there must be something. I Even if there is nothing, the fact that he's giving me an instruction... I owe you see that his focus is not what you will get is who he's honoring most of our faith does not produce because it's not hinged on God it's hinged on his hand so we just say God I need money what do I do and he says give me oh yeah as he's giving you are watching your basket I've dropped it oh two weeks and God says no it's not about it it's about me. Who is learning? I've had many teachings on faith. I'm correcting your mind. I'm sorry we're doing a crash course this morning. Huh? Learn this. So I'm showing you where you'll be making the mistake. Go again, my friend. How many times has he gone? Call the five every year. How many years now? One more year. By the time he's returning back, somebody will block him and say, my brother, come. This thing you have been doing, eh? Uh, I, I don't mean to insult you, but ah, ah! 
are you a stupid person? Is something wrong with your head? Watch this. While you are laughing, I'm showing you why things don't work. What is God looking for? Wasting my time for five years. Because our mentality is that as soon as I go once, as I'm returning, he should hold something. So what you are looking at is the something, not the man. There are times God is building trust. It's not reward yet. Go. One more time. This guy will get tired and angry. A day will come, his face will start changing. That is the test. Are we together? It's not the reward. That is the test. Then a time will come where he is faced with the temptation of obeying or disobeying based on weariness. And he can make a covenant and say, even if he tells me to go and come 1,000 times, I don't care if there's any reward, I will go. The day I hear him say that, maybe it's the eighth time. Now you go, the eighth time. You see that? He's looking at me. And then I say, you don't need to go again. Here is a seed for you. Are we together? Now, watch this. <laughs> if we like money, help me. Are we together now? Watch this. See, he's laughing. This man too likes money. Now, watch, watch this. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, watch this. Did he have to go again? But you will be angry and say he did not go and he got money. You will not know that he was building trust. Let me redefine faith for you. Faith is not always about obeying for rewards. If you don't learn this, pastors learn this. Don't always look for physical rewards. There are times God is helping you to build trust. God will tell you, go and empty your account and you start rejoicing. You are not rejoicing because you love God. You are rejoicing because you have been taught that you can never outgive God. And so while you, and, and it is true, as you empty the account, you are waiting. Let me hear the testimony. And two years, God will act as if he has forgotten that obedience. That is the test there. And you'll be like, God, we need to talk. Last two years ago, you asked me to empty my account. I emptied my account and I even started speaking scripture. And God will say, that's what I want to correct. When you emptied your account, it was not me you trusted. It was increase you trusted. I hope you know increase can be an idol. You don't like what you're hearing. And then one day, like this man now, now, let's assume I was to pay him for every step and I was to give him one one dollar. How many? How many? Eight. So how much was he supposed to get? Now, this guy would have gotten eight dollars. But right now, for foolishly obeying without a reward consciousness and for doing nothing at a place of rest, he gets hundred dollars. How much is hundred dollars? Business people. Huh? Are you learning now? Now listen. When he comes to meet his colleagues and they look at him, they'll say, you are most likely a thief. When everybody is getting one, one dollars, where did you get hundred dollars from? And he says, I got it by trusting God. You say, you're a liar. They will not know that when he came up this mountain, there was something he was doing that did not make sense. I'm telling you how God taught me faith. I act on the word today, not just with the consciousness of results. Don't get me wrong. Results are powerful. But my obedience has never been tied to results. My obedience is tied to my love and my honor to his word. That means whether it works or not, I will do what the word says. Who is learning? When the word says give, I don't care whether increase comes to me physically or not. Provided it is God's word, I live by the word. I don't just act the word. I live by the word. I have expectations. And God's word is sure. But I am showing you the cure to disappointment. Are we together now? Yeah. 
most of us are transactional with God is the reason why you don't receive anything God I opened my hand I gave you five naira where is the ten naira you said you would give me is it that you don't have the power to do it God said I have the power but there's something I need I need to educate your spirit to understand that for your obedience to be fruitful your obedience must be tied to your honor for me and my word not the result that is the reason why if God does not work because your attention is on increase not God you will leave him to another thing that can give you increase because the idea was not who produces the increase but the increase itself so if God does not work and some charm can work you say well it's the same thing the most important thing my drive is the result not the person if your drive is God even if it does not work and an alternative comes, you tell them it's not the car, it's not the house, it's the one who gives me. There is one who must give me. If the devil says I can give you a house, you say no. The house is not bad, but the person who gives. Ah, there are things if God does not give him, may I never get it. May I never get it in this life. Who is learning? The church needs to be careful. We need to, with all due respect, I will not say this when I'm talking to everybody, but the church needs to be careful with the teaching on faith. There is something about our teaching on faith that is destroying people. It's sincere, but it's destroying people because our faith is largely transactional. Go and read the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11. Please make reference to my teaching, the other side of faith that there is something in the Bible called building testimonials of trust. The Bible calls it a good report and that a good report is far superior to obtaining promises. Who is learning? Faith delivers promises. So I hope I didn't disappoint you this morning. Church is quiet. You are saying, so what about my rent issue? Don't worry, God will sort it out. Are you saying I should forget about it? When I left the landlord with an excuse, I say I'm coming to church. God is still father but I'm showing you how to have a rich a full Christian life by the time your work with God becomes transactional it will turn to idolatry where your hunger if you just so most people are just searching for principles that they will obey not because they love God they have been told those principles work so for instance they can tell you you can dance your way out of trouble it's true but the dancing is not really because you are dancing to God. You are dancing as a principle. The same way Habali to say go backward. You are obeying that principle not because you like going backward. You don't care about him. You don't even know his name. He just said go backward and touch this. And you will be the chairman tomorrow. That's how many people act with God. So the Bible says dance. And you say okay. God said I should dance. I will dance out my pain. And while you are dancing your attention is not on Jesus. Your attention is on the result. And so if the dance does not produce it, you will be angry. You don't have the courage to confront him and tell him. Many of you right now, you are offended with God because you have obeyed many principles because your faith needs to be re-educated. When your faith is on God beyond the result, there's no disappointment again. Your obedience becomes consistent when it is hinged to God and not principles. And let me tell you something. The Bible says there were some that did not obtain promises, but everybody obtained a good report. Remember, he called them elders not because they obtained promises, for by it the elders obtained a good report. What was the report? The report of righteousness, that they trusted God. The report of some refusing to receive deliverance, looking forward to a better resurrection, and the Bible called it faith. So faith that is entirely hinged on only obtaining promises. I'm telling you, in this end time, many Christians will chicken out because they will say, Lord, I engage this thing. As a pastor, I was told that if I walk in integrity, members will come. You obeyed the principle and you kept looking. After one month, no member came and he said, look, I've tried this thing. Huh? It did not work. Somebody will say, please, let's try another thing. Once we are, I hope this is the right place I'm saying this thing. Don't get me wrong. 
you will see more results beyond your imagination. I can assure you on that. But I'm showing you the correct way. Most times our teaching on faith, sincerely so, has come out of our own frustrations. Educating believers to be transactional is a dangerous theology, even though it's sincere. There are, this is the reason why you have controversies like the giving thing now. That thing is an embarrassment to our understanding. The church should not even be discussing such things. I will tell you the reason why. Because most people have transacted bad business with somebody. It just happens that the name of the customer is Jesus. Did you hear what I said? They've done business with this customer. And they're saying you better show up because Nigeria is boiling. And this customer, I gave you goods. You didn't give me the reward. And I hear that you are a savior. I hear you are a redeemer. I hear you are the lion of tribe of Judah. You must be a wicked man for you to have been collecting my money for all these years and you are not giving me anything. Transaction. I truly prospered when I repented from transactional living. God gives, but I am in a healthy relationship with him that does not depend on what he gives me. He gave me his best already when I did not ask for anything. It doesn't kill my expectation. I expect great things and I verbalize them to him in prayer. But he knows that my expectations for increase is secondary. My honor to him is the principal motivation. I hope you're understanding this. You came for a leader's meeting. Pastor, go and pray and say, Father, I trust you for increase. I will obey the word of God. I will pray in season and out of season, but it will never, never, just be because I'm looking for members. If my prayer life is controlled by the desire for members, the day members do not come, you will eventually stop praying. If your prayer life is controlled just by increase and power and anointing, a day will come after fasting for 100 days. Many young people now are practicing it without knowing. They are praying and fasting because they have said prayer and fasting leads to power. They are not concerned about using it for intimacy. They are just using it as a spiritual transaction model to get power. And it truly brings power. Except that if your attention is on that power and not Jesus, you will still receive an idol called anointing. Hallelujah. That is the reason why when you taste of the power, it comes with arrogance. And you can say, I paid the price. Oh, I paid that price. I fasted for 100 days. There's nothing wrong with that. But that is absolute nonsense. Except the Lord built a house. They labor in vain. I know a gentleman who prayed for 400 days and fasted. 400 days. I wrapped up with him. That gentleman cannot carry anybody out of wheelchair till today. I'm not downplaying it. Are we together? But I'm saying this thing needs to be corrected our transactional mentality idolatry is not only physical you can use spiritual laws to practice idolatry and idolatry can be practiced even towards jesus just because the name of the person you can create an idol and name the idol jesus are we together now just because you have the idea of jesus in your mind does not mean it's the jesus of the bible God, even if you will never bless me, I will love you. I will serve you. I will obey you and I will live for you. Thank God for the blessings. Thank God for the opportunity to watch your word produce in my life. But even if it never bears fruit. If I came for this conference and I met only one row of people, I tell you, on that God, I will still be preaching with this passion. It is an honor because everyone I would have met is equal to the blood of Jesus. I will preach and shout as if I'm talking to a stadium of people. Our frustrations come because our business transactions called spirituality is not working. You will need to listen to this message again to understand what I've said. Many of you don't yet get it. I'm being honest with you. You think you got it but you really did not get it. I struggle to share what I'm sharing this morning, but the Holy Spirit just put it in my heart. Since I'm talking to leaders and pastors, these are some of the things we need to correct. My dear people, we need to correct this. 
God corrected it in my own life. You are not bad when you find yourself being transactional with God. Now there are expectations and God allows us to bring expectations. But I'm saying what is wrong with our Christian understanding is that we come to God with a transactional mentality. Our mindset is on the breakthrough. Our mindset is on the lifting. Our mindset is on the promotion, not him. It is him first before every other thing. Back to my example so that this my, my wonderful friend will go and sit down. You see that? So you see everything I've taught you now? You learn it. You are learning. You, are, you should be the one to produce this result more than everybody. Huh? So go again one time. Come back. Next time people ask you what is the gain in serving God? Tell them the gain is the joy of honor more than the things you receive. The joy of knowing that I'm honoring my king. That way you will frustrate anybody who is not serious with God. Because they cannot understand why you are coming to church. Sister, if they ask you, you have been coming to church and you are not yet married. You are coming to church and you don't yet have a child. Tell them, I desire marriage and I desire a child. But to let you know that we have passed that level with God a long time ago. A long time ago. If my motivation for joining ushers is that I hope that after two weeks I will find a husband. Let me tell you what you will do. Every time preaching is going on, you will be looking at, because where your, uh, how does the Bible put it? Where your treasure is. And I'm not being sarcastic. Are we together? I'd like you to lay your hand on your head and say, Father, redirect my focus to you. Redirect my focus to you. Redirect my focus to you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, Lord. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, we honor you Lord. You are praying. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. One minute, you are praying. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. Apostle, why should I give as a believer? Apostle, why should I come to church? Apostle, why should I pray? Why should I fast? Now you are redirecting my focus that is not just on the things, the blessings, the object, the increase, but on Him. Yes, sir. So is it wrong to pray and fast for power? No, sir. Is it wrong to give expecting increase? No, sir. In fact, to be honest with you, when there is no expectation, you will not even get an answer. I am only reprioritizing your expectations. That your expectation should not be on things outside of God. Look at me. How many of you know that if I visit pastor's house, honestly, I know that he loves me. And I know that he honors me. If he's aware I'm coming to his house, how many of you know that at least I will leave that house with a bottle of water? Is that true? But will it not be foolish for that to be the reason why I go to his house? When you go for marriage or occasions in the East here, do you go for food? But do you expect food? No, no, no. I, I, mean, I, I mean seriously now. Don't tell me what happens. Are we together? <laughs> Someone said yes. So. <laughs> Instead of paying 10,000 in this Nigeria, I'd rather just look for somebody who is wedding. Are we together? But, but I mean this seriously. So, you go for an occasion and 
already as you are entering the table is set but your attention is on the person the celebrant and then even while you are eating your attention is still there that is how to profit from it imagine that you go to a place and you this is a celebrant and you say please i'm not here i don't know who the celebrant is who is responsible for this kitchen and the celebrant is watching you and he says sorry sir I, I'm, I'm not i'm not even interested in high table and whilst you see the drinks you just go there on your own everyone is seated like this they've not prayed they've not gotten to item seven you just open everything and say i know why i came and watch this while you are saying that you are saying reverend i honor you you mean you are the one who is really celebrating this birthday how stupid does that sound that's how a lot of believers here's jesus christ and they come around and say jesus it's not you I've been praying to God for a saxophone. It's just that I use your name to get here. Can you give me my saxophone? And they are going around him and he's trying to seek your attention. And I say, no, uh, thank you for the saxophone. I need a Bible. Jesus, again, I hear that you give guitars. I saw the seed. This is how many people are living there. Look at, he's trying to call your attention. I trust you for a speaker again. And in the mighty name of Jesus, give me another thing again. And at the end of it, you say, I'm a man of faith. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. Listen, this was a painful education that the Spirit of God took me through. It brought deliverance to my life but it brought power to my life because when I pray I do not stop making my petitions but it has become a relational thing I was delivered from transactional Christianity many years ago by the mercies of God I have never served the Lord and will never serve him for money or for things don't get me wrong I expect rewards I am a worker in his house and I am deserving by mercy of the rewards but go and ask God if he never blesses me again I will still hold this mic till the day I see his face you see if your mindset is transactional it will spill over to how you do ministry I'm sorry to say this we are going to round up this is the problem with the church in the West their understanding of faith started well but it started tilting towards material transactions as proof that the world is working and it has now degenerated to several levels of compromises so if I'm coming to your church they'll have to arrange everything you see that now it's, it's a contractual thing I don't need to know you I don't need to love the sheep I don't need to love who comes to get born again that's not my business are you going to give me fifty thousand dollars if you are doing that I'm coming to your church Oh, I don't want to. It's men of God who will tell you, some who have interacted with all due respect with preachers globally, who will tell you some understanding that people use for ministry. That sometimes you need to go back and say, ah, where did these people keep the fear of God? It becomes for the highest bidder. So it doesn't matter if you are a devil, it doesn't matter whether you are a sorcerer, whether you are practicing witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Are you going to give me 50,000? Yes. Send the deposit of 40,000 first. Then we'll talk. By the time $40,000 hits my account, I'm anointed. It doesn't matter what happens in, in your church. If you're a young minister here, listen, let me encourage you. I know that we're talking to both pastors, business leaders. Make up your mind under God that in righteousness, you will get this thing right. Love everybody and honor everybody but stay with the spirit of grace to select a righteous template for ministry so that you don't destroy yourself. There are things that will look fashionable and marketable for a while until the vengeance of God lands upon evildoers. The part of righteousness may be inconveniencing for a long time, but there is honor in it. I have never, and I'm not saying uh, particularly for those who are music artists, but as a man of God, a personal philosophy, I, I don't I will never bring tell a church you come and give me money sign this oh may God forbid it no. 
I'm, I will not be offended if, if that's the way God trained you to save Johnny. We're all going to stand before him. But as far as I am concerned, no. 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 There are things that never motivate my passion for invitations. Crowd, the kind of great people like we have here. Wealthy people. Some of you are very, very wealthy people. Congratulations. Thank God for his hand upon your life. That's not my assignment. My sermons don't change because of the status of the person there. Are we together? If I alter my sermon, it is because of gauging the various levels of spiritual maturity. So I know whether I serve milk or meat or strong meat based on the people there. From a spiritual standpoint, not just a, a standpoint of financial status and otherwise. There are things we must correct. One of it is your idea of faith.